Hey guys, Sea Drama Invasion here, back with another review video for you. Let's just jump right in. First off, I'll talk about Parallel World, which is a drama starring Nini and Bayou, along with a bunch of great side cast members that actually gets the storyline and character arc and spotlight shine on them as they deserve. I'll keep things to minimal no spoilers, but when I do want to talk about the ending, I'll warn you guys so you can skip like two minutes ahead. This has 38 episodes. It's a thriller romance fantasy drama set in the desert. And as the title suggests, it sets mostly in the parallel world universe. I would say right off the bat, the first 10 episodes, although interesting if you like these characters, there is a mystery to it and all, but it's more slow paced because everything happens after they go to the parallel world, which happens around episode 10 or 11. This is one that nails the aspect of the world intrigue. I was so sucked into this mythical fantasy world. I also loved the cast of characters. You have a balance between a strong and cool female lead, a level-headed male lead, which we love, a mature relationship that has so much trust. They're all willing to put their lives on the line for each other, and this group of people that becomes like a found family. Let's talk about the actors, but we'll start with the side characters. I think the two standout ones from this drama, which has so many, is Li Yun Rui and Lu Yu Xiao. Her character doesn't really come into play until later on in the series, but um, he was so wonderful. And at first, he's really that background character that has zero lines until later on when they got close to each other and the way he crushes on Shamang's character is so cute. I wish we got more payoff to that couple. I think they deserve so much better, but either way, wonderful job from them. Lots of good chemistry. They were the cute couple while the main leads were the ones that just feel like they're in a universe of their own. like. They are soulmates, they are meant to be together, their personalities are so similar. And I love the way they're smart and they all think on their feet. So like there's lots of moments where it's a very intense situation because they're thrust upon this world with magical stuff, supernatural entities and weird creatures and you have to navigate it together because both of them got their memories wiped and essentially they don't know what they're going into. You're right there with them and it makes this so much more intense because you don't know how they're gonna get through things and it's that unknown mystery of this world that's so addictive and you want to be exploring everything different cities and i was just fascinated by every new little town and details that came up so male lead basically wakes up after a blackout and his fiance, everybody he knew and a bunch of people went missing. Nobody knows what happened and everybody who has a clue kind of disappeared without a trace. This is when he bumps into the female lead played by Nini and she has a tattoo. Also, she has like bits and pieces of things that relate to what happened. So she seeks out him and he seeks out her. They both have their memories erased and they go on this adventure together with the side characters it's so much fun nini's acting abilities are so insane you get to see so many different sides of her here one scene that stood out is when she was feeling unbearable physical pain and there's like veins in her forehead her eyes are watering like her acting is really next level you also get to see her fight a bunch of people because she's like trained, she's super cool, and whatever she wants, she gets. See Drama Land is getting better and better with these couple pairings because this chemistry was so natural, probably because both have been in the game for a while now and they just make it work. It doesn't feel cringe. Everything feels like a natural flow of conversation from them falling in love. It's not weird, awkward, or full of cliches, thank God. And there's just a lot of times where you really feel for them. Like, they feel hopeless. I like the realistic approach. This is not just like a fun little hee hee ha ha. 
adventure without any consequences. I mean, realistically, think about it. If you were thrown into an alien landscape, like there's going to be diseases, there's going to be people after you and you're going to come like unprepared. Also shout out to the MVP character, which has to be the rooster, okay? The rooster literally saved them. It's so funny, it's smart. Jin Han is an actor that I really don't mesh well with. All of his drama roles, I'm kind of like, I can't watch anything with him as a main lead either because I just can't get into the character that he's portraying. But this one, he plays such a good job. He doesn't really come up until the last act of the show, but I thought he was charismatic and in the amount of episodes that he was in, he really stood out and was memorable. Okay, I'm gonna talk about endings, so skip forward to around 8 minutes. This drama, I'll give a 9 out of 10. 3, 2, 1, spoilers ahead. Okay, let's talk about the ending. I thought the biggest tragedy gotta be Jang Zen's character, the guy played by Jin Han. He really risked his entire life and got duped he was so confused by who he loved and in the end he couldn't even meet the one that he was fighting for when he was a child it was pretty heartbreaking the flashbacks and i wish we got to explore that a little bit more so tragic how he wanted to meet her and he finally he risked it all he got hurt all of that and in the end he didn't I saw a lot of comments not liking the situation with Meng Ziyi's character, Ching Zi, and the female lead, Nini's character. But, like, if you watch closely, there were foreshadowing and there's some hints to it. I was so sad about Gao Shen. I was like, you can't leave him like that. Like, he needs to be reunited with his love, and even if they allude to it, I need it all on screen. And I wish they just give it like 40 damn episodes or just one special episode so we can get that whole storyline fleshed out. In the end, we got a happy ending, and it's also weird who the narrator guy is, the one with the grandpa and the painter. Girl, I hate those open endings where you look up in the sky and you're like, yes, I imagine they have a happy ending. This one though, like no one straight up dies. So I'm just gonna say it's better than a lot of those other ones that I've seen. But still, I needed to see the whole group reunite, you know? So yeah, ending was a little bit rushed and confusing, but overall still something so unique and fun. Also, I was waiting for a wedding to happen, okay? They all been through so much, like we just need them in one place, all celebrating something together and then you can close the curtains and roll the credits. But no. But I still stick to my rating. Okay, let's move on to the other dramas that I watched. I also watched this short drama called Dong Lan Shui. It's like the best two minute drama you can find. And I was also skeptical, okay? I've heard of this from people on the internet and i was like there's no way that you can do anything with two minutes an episode this is ridiculous but um i was wrong because the pacing of this drama is pretty decent this is a revenge story and it has pretty good chemistry acting's not bad especially for the female lead she's gorgeous and i really liked her styling they did a good job for like zero budget so it stars Chi Sha Sha and Jin Chao, both are younger actors that are relatively rookies in this industry. They did really good actually, especially female aid. She is this calm, composed, the knife, or the right hand woman to the male lead and she trains him. She's basically an assassin. It's a power struggle drama with a prince male lead who is violent and they're not afraid to show it. This is not one of those dramas where they have any like moral compass where they're like pondering for like 10 episodes like I shouldn't kill anyone, I'm not that type of person, no no no, it's not that. Like I love that about this and I think that it knows that because it has to stand out some type of way. How I would describe this drama is it reminds me of a smaller budget and scale of Till the End of the Moon. So you would think two minutes sounds ridiculous and it would be a trashy choppy mess i thought so too but after around like two or three episodes which is literally six minutes 
um, you'll understand the story and it works out. The romance is mysterious. The drama doesn't shy away from blood and torture. Like if you have enough time, like three hours or something, basically the length of a movie or two movies, then check this one out. I think it's worth it. Also, I was surprised to find out that the director who worked on this was the one behind one of my favorite dramas last year, An Ancient Love Song. And you bet I'll be looking at, through her backlist and anticipating other dramas from her. There's also this clear parody of one character who is the transmigrational character that plays a sassy know-it-all you know the funny character but right here they're just like no this girl's out of place i was like damn i i was tricked okay i was like i thought i thought his maid his like his right hand girl was gonna be the main girl but why is there this other character but um what happens to her let's just say was one of the most funny things ever and i think the directors and stuff the writers put that in purpose to throw us off and be like, what's going on here? There's actually a, some really dark moments, but overall it's something new, it's experimental, and I'm actually here for it because it's giving kind of more light to a lot of younger actors. And the writing is pretty solid because it's usually unique because they know, okay, like what do I have in two minutes that will convince you, that will make myself stand out as a drama. I need to make the storyline or something unexpected happens and I need this to continue happening so it will influence the big trends and maybe one of these will get adapted to a longer form drama. After that, I have a drama called Death's Game. This is a Korean drama with eight episodes. And if you haven't watched it already and you decide to pick it up after I review it, because then you don't have to wait for all the episodes that come out like I did. And when there's dramas with season one and season two, I always make the mistake of watching the first season, okay? Especially not looking at the date, but at least this one came out like right after like a month or so. But this is a mystery survival drama. You follow the main character who is the male lead. He faces death's wrath after being forced into 12 different bodies of different people. This has a star studded cast. Like every single time he gets to be in somebody else's body, it's a new actor. At first, it feels like a dark comedy not gonna lie like the first like few episodes it felt like i didn't know where it's gonna go i thought it's just a survival dark comedy fun time with a lesson at the end and while there is that there's more to it it's super fun but also super bloody and gory if you haven't noticed the title death's game like death is literally toying with him and trying to make him die in the worst way possible until he figures out why he effed up. There is a whole sequence of like full on serial killer torture chamber. So maybe gory is like an understatement for that particular episode. So gory and you really have to root for him, okay? Because he gets thrust into this weird situation and you're in his perspective the first death is him the first few deaths is kind of unescapable they throw him into like a situation where the plane is gonna go down and i'm like how the heck are you supposed to survive that and even he feels like it's rigged he's like there is no way that you can beat this but there is and seeing his whole journey was really good actually he had such a good character moment character arcs a lot of satisfying stuff in terms of action all the little loose strings were tied got a shout out go yun jung and also the mom character in this drama like those two actresses kim mi kyung go yun jung were amazing and they were part of his original life so they do show up um, frequently as you go into this drama 
but I was surprised how much I connected with characters that you only seen glimpses of. And I think that's where Korean dramas excel. The emotional things here is so well written. Characters are so well written and not a dull moment. I would give this a solid 9 out of 10. I have a couple more K-dramas to go, but I think I'll stick to three to four um, dramas a video. Nothing that really exceeds 15 minutes now. Just because I like a good mix, so once I complete Sword and Fairy or one of the other C-dramas, I'll review the K-dramas. So you get a good balance of C-dramas and K-dramas in a video. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Look forward to my reviews. Most likely next episode will include My Demon, Twinkling Watermelon. For C dramas, not sure yet, but still working on Sword and Fairy, Fighting for Love, 19th Floor. Yeah, let me know what dramas you're currently watching, which one you're enjoying so far into 2024. And I'll see you guys in the next video.